Hello everyone, it's Zorkatone here, aka The Other Apprentice, and today, we're going to be going a little mad. Today's date is Thursday, May 26th, 2016, and today, I am going to become the Mad Hatter. We have quite a busy day planned ahead of us. Uh, first, we're going to go to a pop-up shop, or location, that is uh, promoting Alice Through the Looking Glass. After that, I'm hoping to get a cosplay shoot done with a good friend of mine out in the Enchanted Forest. And finally, to top off the day, we are going to be going with more friends to a late-night screening of the film itself. And of course, throughout all of this, I'm going to be in full Hatter makeup, costume, and garb. I think it's pretty common knowledge that the 1951 Disney animated film is one of my favorite Disney films of all time, and it holds a very, very special place in my heart. So when Tim Burton announced his version, I was really excited to see what that was going to look like. I have played several different versions of the Mad Hatter, whether it was from the original Lewis Carroll book, or from the uh, 1951 Disney animated film, uh, all the way to Martin Short, uh, American McGee's version, and finally all the way to Johnny Depp's version. One thing that I really like about Johnny Depp's version of the Mad Hatter is that his emotions are very close to the surface, and Johnny Depp himself has said that he's very much like a mood ring, and I, myself, am also quite over-emotional, so it's, there's just sort of this kind of, this perfect match that really seems quite appropriate for me, I should think. Admittedly, it is a bit difficult for me to cosplay this version of the Mad Hatter because Tim's version of Wonderland was actually a stepping stone into introducing myself to someone very special to me, but sadly that person is no longer a part of my life. So yeah, I think it's... I, I think it's only natural that I would sort of have my own fallings out with it here and there. So when the sequel was finally announced, uh, not only was I over the moon for it, but I also thought that it might have given me another opportunity to explore this character in another light. Because the Mad Hatter has experienced a lot of trauma, you know, he's been through a lot of pain, I've certainly been through a lot of pain, so in a, <laughs> in a, in a, tragically, in a tragically twisted way, I, I think it works pretty well. I think... Incorporating a lot of my own personal madness, so that is, you know, any of my trauma, or any of my, any of my pain, my depression, my anxiety, you know, all of that. I think it's probably the one time where I'm able to use, you know, any of that kind of, any of that kind of legitimate pain, whether it's, you know, lamenting over people that aren't in my life anymore, or if it's just regular day-to-day -day struggles of you know, how I keep myself sane, for lack of a better word. I think there's definitely a lot of personal experience that I can incorporate into this character while still staying true to his own history and remembering how everything might have felt on my end. I was really, really hoping for a sequel. I wanted one. I thought that it was, you know, pretty much eminent. Not only given the amount of money that it made, but seeing how there are two books, it would kind of, you know, not really make too much sense if they didn't make a second movie. Kind of, sort of, based off of that book, because, well, we all know the first film didn't really follow the events of the first book to a T now, did it? So. 